In this video, I want to talk about what we refer to as ketosis, or in other words, the fourth central moment of a distribution. And just thinking about a particular example, I've drawn two random variables PDFs. And in principle, the way in which I've tried to draw these two variables, it might be the case that these two random variables actually have the same variance. And I've also drawn them such that they're centered around the same value, so perhaps they have a mean of 10. So if we were to just look at the expected value of both of these random variables, so the expected value of i, where i here can equal sort of 1 for the first variable or 2 for the second variable, then the expected value of xi would be equal to 10 in both cases. And similarly, the variance of xi, as I've sort of intended to draw it, might be the same in both cases. Perhaps it's equal to 2, let's say. So on the basis of just these first two centred moments, or the first one not being a centred moment, rather the second one being a centred moment, we wouldn't actually be able to tell these two distributions apart. And that's because we purely sort of focused on the points that are relatively near the mean. That's what we kind of do with the second central moment. How do we then go about looking at the sort of difference between these two variables in terms of what's going on in the tails? Well, I'm, I'm sure you probably guessed it, I've alluded to it. Essentially what we need to do is we need to look at the fourth central moment. So the fourth central moment or the, is referred to as the expectation of x minus the mean, which is 10 to the power 4. And just reminding ourselves of what this exactly means, it means that if we were to take the process an infinitely many times and for each sort of realisation of x, we then take 10 off and then we raise that to the power 4, and then we do that for the second x, so x2 minus 10 to the power 4, and we just sort of continue that process forever, and then sort of take the average of all those processes, then that's what it actually means to have the fourth central moment. And let's think about how it might differ between these two random variables. When you sort of have anything raised to the power 4, the sort of thing to realise that as this sort of difference between x and the mean gets bigger, then when I raise that to the power 4, it gets bigger very, very quickly. If I've got any sort of large deviations of points away from the mean, then they are going to be over-representative in our sort of expectations. And if we were to calculate the fourth central moment for our second variable, we would find that it was much, much greater than the fourth central moment for our first variable. And that's because our second variable actually has points which lie further away from the mean, and it has more of those points that lie further away from the mean, rather. Uh, and that's sort of represented by its sort of fatter tails of its distribution. And because it has more points which lie a sort of reasonable distance away from the mean, when I raise that sort of diff distance to the power 4, it means that this sort of second variable is going to have a much higher fourth central moment than the first. And this is kind of what we refer to as the ketosis of a distribution. But normally what we do is we actually refer to the ketosis of a distribution, we call it sort of gamma, and we say, well, that's equal to the sort of fourth cen central moment of our variable x divided by our sort of standard deviation all squared, so that's now sigma to the power of four, and the reason we do that is because we're interested in how spread our sort of variable is relative to its sort of um, standard deviation. Because in principle, if it was just this tells you a value of, I don't know, a thousand, without knowing how sort of um, spread our points are around the mean, so in other, other words, without knowing the variance, that doesn't really tell us that much. So that's why we kind of divide through by our standard deviation, or uh, sorry, our variance rather. And we square the variance such that these two things will now have the same dimensions because we don't want our sort of measure of a variable's ketosis to depend on dimensions. But then finally what we do is we take off a value of three of this. And this seems like quite an arbitrary thing to do and in a sense it is, but the reason we do this is because this is the ketosis of a normal distribution. And this is this sort of measure gamma here is sometimes called ketosis, it's sometimes called excess ketosis because it essentially tells us whether our variable is or has fatter tails relative to the normal distribution. If gamma is greater than zero, then it has fatter tails. If it's 
less than zero, then it essentially has thinner tails than a normal distribution. In the next video, we're going to talk about the third central moment of a distribution. I know it kind of seems like I've done things out of order, but I've done it for a reason. The third central moment of a distribution is a little bit more complicated to think about than the fourth central moment.